Do you agree that since we spend so many hours working, we should at least do something we love and that gives us a real sense of meaning and purpose? If you do agree, then we're on the same page. And if you do agree, but you struggle to find what kind of work would actually give you this sense of satisfaction, then you're in the right place because that's exactly what we'll talk about in this video. In this video, I'll share with you how you can use the westernized Ikigai model to help you figure out your calling or clarify your life's work. It's a tool I love to use with all my life purpose and life design coaching clients because it's super easy to understand and it's very practical. So I'll first explain what Ikigai is and then I'll show you how you can use its westernized version to help you clarify what kind of work you would most likely enjoy doing. So first, what is Ikigai? Ikigai is a Japanese term or concept that roughly translates to what makes life worth living or a reason for being alive or the realization of one's aspirations and hopes. It's often simplified as life purpose. So basically, Ikigai is really the idea of cultivating what gives your life meaning. It's more than just the work you do. It encompasses all areas of your life, like your relationships, your family, your hobbies and other activities, and your spiritual practice, for example. But in this video, I'll focus on how we can use its westernized version, which is a model created by Mark Wynn, to help us figure out our calling, our life's work. So your life's work or calling is at the intersection of the four components in this diagram, and also a fifth one that I call lifestyle. So the first element is what you love, so your natural interests, your passions, what brings you joy. You can also put here your values and what you stand for. The second element is what you're good at or what you're willing to get good at. It can be your natural talents, your gifts, the skills you have acquired and love using. For example, sometimes there's, there are skills that we have acquired because of our job or because of school, but we don't necessarily enjoy using them. Like I'm really not a big fan of Excel, for example, but I know how to use it because I've used it in school. So you wanna focus more on the skills that you enjoy using. The third element is what the world or what people need and how you would like to serve and how you would like to contribute to the collective. The fourth element is what you can get paid for. And the fifth element is what I call your preferred lifestyle. So if one element is missing, it may be a hobby or your mission or your profession, but not necessarily your calling or life's work. For example, if there's something you love to do, but that doesn't bring any value to others, then that's a hobby, not a calling. Or if you have a job that pays you a salary and that you're good at, but that you don't really enjoy, then it's a profession, but not your calling. So let's look at the five elements in more detail. And I'll also give you a series of questions to help you determine what is it that you love, that you're good at, and so on. So here are a few questions to help you define what you love. When do you feel most alive? Think of the past one or two weeks. Scan each day in your mind and recall the moments when you felt good, when you felt at peace, when you felt maybe in a state of flow, when you felt alive. And write those moments down. Then you can add everything else that you know you love, you know you love doing, but that you haven't done in the past one or two weeks. For some people it might be painting or drawing or playing music or playing tennis or playing chess. When I did this exercise of scanning the past couple of weeks, I realized that I felt most alive when I had a meaningful conversation with a friend, mostly about topics related to spirituality, metaphysics or personal growth, and also when I was coaching my clients to help them figure out their purpose and calling. That was very valuable information to me that kind of confirmed my calling and that I'm on the right track. Know that right now you can write down anything you love doing, even if it doesn't seem related to anything you could do for work. And once you're done, you can write beside each item on your list, H for hobby and W for work. A hobby is something you enjoy doing, but that you know that you wouldn't want to make it a career. For example, I love walking in nature. It's one of my favorite things to do, but I'm not passionate about the outdoors. Like I wouldn't like to be a guide or even a writer for a magazine like Outdoors or the National Geographic. Another question is what tasks do you enjoy doing at work? 
so you can think of your current and also past jobs. Another question is what feels like play to you that looks like work to others? It's funny because we tend to assume that everyone likes the same things we do. But like I said earlier, I really don't like using Excel. But I know that some people, for some reason that I really don't understand, love to enter data into Excel documents. So there are things that feel like play to you that would look like work to other people. Next is my favorite question. If you were paid an equal salary for doing any job 30 hours a week, what would you choose to do? What can you not not do? That's a strange question, but it's actually very helpful. For example, I cannot not learn about spirituality and personal growth. It's just stronger than me. And I cannot not share what I learn with others. It's just also stronger than me. What are you curious to learn and explore? Of course, just thinking about what you may love or what you think you love is not enough. You need to try it. The second element in the diagram is what you're good at. So now you can reflect upon and write down your natural talents, your gifts, the skills you have acquired and that you love to use. So what are your gifts, natural strengths and talents? What comes easy to you that may be difficult to others? Think of your past jobs and write down what you were good at. Ask the people you know well, what do you think I'm good at? What would you come to me for? There are also a few good personality tests that you may want to take if you want to discover your strength. The third component is what the world needs. So think of what people need that you can provide. Your life's work must bring value to others, otherwise you won't get paid for it. As Jim Rohn said, you get paid for the value you bring to the marketplace. Zig Ziglar also said something similar. You will get all you want in life if you help enough people get what they want. Your life's work or calling will make a meaningful contribution to the lives of others. The greater the need, the easier it'll be to make a living from it. Plus, serving others is the number one thing that will bring greater meaning and a greater sense of purpose to your life. And the fourth component is what you can get paid for. Since we're talking about work, then it must be something you can get paid for. For example, reading spirituality books alone won't give me a paycheck. I must offer something valuable that people want and need and will be willing to pay for. The fifth component, the one I added, is your preferred lifestyle. I believe that thinking about what kind of lifestyle we want is also very important. So here are a few questions you can ask yourself. Do you prefer to work at an office or from home? Do you prefer having an employer or being your own boss? Or what kind of work schedule would you like to have? How many hours a week do you want to work? And once you're done, look at your answers and define what are your non-negotiables. For example, some of my non-negotiables are that I will not not wake up with an alarm in the morning. I also need to be my own boss and be location independent. So what are your non-negotiables? Here's something very important that you must know about your calling or life's work. It's something that you develop, like unpack, and that will evolve over time. You can think of it as a living thing, like not something fixed. Enjoy the process of developing it or unpacking it. It's an ever-evolving process of self-discovery, exploration, and expansion. Since clarifying our calling has a lot to do with knowing ourselves, I encourage you to watch my other video about how you can create your own personal manifesto. It'll help you get clearer on your values and what you stand for and what matters to you. And that's it guys, thank you so much for watching. I wish you a beautiful day and I'll see you next week.